Podcasters like you and I want to know every ounce of information about how our podcasts are consumed. Why? So that we can make better decisions on how to actively grow our audience. In this video, I'm going to talk you through Apple Podcasts Connect, and in particular, the data that right now you can access about your podcast. It's insightful, it's useful, and it will help you to grow your audience. If you find this video useful, go ahead and subscribe to the channel for more of the same. Of course, drop a like and let a friend know that you found this video useful too. Let's dig in to Apple Podcasts Connect and how it can help you to grow your audience. Logging into podcastsconnect.apple.com, which you can find in the description of this video to make your life a little easier is done with your Apple ID. And this is, of course, the Apple ID that you have used to submit your podcast to Apple. If, of course, you're already in Apple Podcasts, you will have logged into Apple Podcast Connect before. And upon logging in, you are going to be faced with the range of podcasts that you have inside their directory. Now, this is really, really important because everything that we talk about within Apple Podcast Connect is only relevant to Apple's ecosystem of listening directories. So whether that is on your iPhone, whether it's on an iPad, whether it's on Apple Podcasts on a computer, all of this data, all of this information is pertinent only to that ecosystem. So when we start to look at listener data and trends and analysis of episodes in your podcast, it is only pertinent to listens and devices and to people that have listened using that ecosystem from Apple. Now, of course, there are many other places that get information from Apple. So if you are in Apple Podcasts, if Spark of Rebellion right here is in Apple Podcasts, of course, other places will get information from that, such as Overcast and so on. But the data is not fed back to Apple. So any listens that you get from places like Overcast, for example, aren't included in the analytics data that we're going to look at. There are two aspects to Apple Podcast Connect. The first one is the management of your podcast, just letting Apple know certain things about your podcast. And of course, we know that that includes submission. So clicking here allows me to paste an RSS feed in from Captivate, my podcast host, and just submit that podcast brand new to Apple Podcasts. But I can also manage existing podcasts in here. That's the first facet of Podcast Connect. The second facet, if I click up here, is the podcast analytics, which we'll get to in just a second. Let's first of all dig into this first facet, which is the management of podcasts. And having clicked here on Spark of Rebellion, you'll see that I can change my RSS feed. You really shouldn't need to do that. Even if you move podcast hosts, your 301 redirect that you put on from your old host should suffice. You shouldn't really need to do that. It's very rare that you need to do that. You can also check the status. You can check, actually, when did Apple last look at my RSS feed? When did it actually last refresh the RSS feed? And what's the mirror URL? Now, the mirror URL is a permanent link. It says here right, right away when I click on this little question mark icon, it's a mirror URL, essentially, that means that you can change your RSS feed inside Apple Podcasts, and that unique URL will always stay the same. So you can always link to this mirror URL if you so wish. It's very rare that people use that, but it is there if you need it as a backup. These marketing tools that Apple provide are also rather interesting. They allow you to generate embeddable players and listen on Apple Podcasts, direct link badges, QR codes, and all sorts of other marketing tools. So have a play with those. It's not the focus of this video, but they do exist, and I highly recommend that you do play with them. Now, when we come down to additional information, there are three other things that we can do. We can view our podcast on Apple Podcasts. Voila. And it's nice and easy, of course. It shows you all the ratings from the relevant country that we are in. It shows what other people have subscribed to, all of the reviews, and so on and so forth. Plus, of course, I can play the episodes from right here, and I can click through and just look at them. I can also hide that podcast or delete it. Now, you might want to hide a podcast if you go on a hiatus. It's very rare that you'd need to do that, but you could hide that podcast. It won't delete it from Apple Podcasts, but it will just hide it from the search results so new people can't subscribe. And if you really want to, you can also delete that podcast, which, again, you probably won't want to do too very often. Now, the really interesting thing about this management section is that if you ever feel that your latest episode has not been picked up, you can always come in here 
and just refresh that feed. Now, it's not recommended that you do that often. There's actually no need to do that. Your RSS feed from your host, like Captivate.fm, will handle that. However, if you do want to manually refresh, this is where you do it. So the management part of Apple Podcast Connect is really just about making sure your show is up to date. You can host as many shows as you want through Captivate.fm and you can put all of those shows into Apple Podcasts using Podcast Connect. And the management, like I said, is really just about making sure the information is up to date. It's very rare that you'll need to change anything in here because, of course, your RSS feed does the job. What most people are interested in then is the analytics. So if I just fire open the analytics from Apple's ecosystem, you'll see that, well, first and foremost, this is still in beta. That's very important to understand. This is still in beta. It has everything that you'd expect. It's got the date picker. You can choose the relevant dates that you want to analyze. You can choose the show that you want to analyze. Or, of course, you can look at this overview that we have right here. Or you can dig in at an episode level, right at this top overview level. You can dig in to these episodes. But the real power comes from deep diving into the show. So if we choose Spark of Rebellion and dive into these analytics, this gives you information that no one else can really give you apart from closed ecosystems. So Spotify can give you data about all of your podcast metrics, but only from their platform. Apple Podcasts Connect here is no different. It can tell us things like the number of devices listened on, the number of hours listened, and the time per device. But this is only from the Apple ecosystem. So it's not an aggregate of everything. It's not a true reflection of everything. But it does give us a lot of indication around potentially what we can do with our podcast to improve it. And this initial screen is, is very, very simple. Again, you have some date ranges up here that you can analyze and you can change them as you would expect. You've got your data points here that are very clearly marked, you know, the number of devices, the number of time listened, and of course, the time per device. It's all very clear what's going on. We've got total time listened broken down by people who are subscribed versus not subscribed, and of course, country and region. So all stuff, again, that you would expect the deep dive recent episode section, again, will tell you some very, very obvious information, but again, only from the Apple ecosystem. So it tells me when this episode was released, episode 90, the duration of that episode, number of devices that listened to it, the total time listened, and the time per device. And importantly, what I find fascinating is this total average consumption. So 76% is the average consumption for this episode. 76% of the episode gets listened to per person. Now, I'm going to dig into that in just one second because there is a lot of information and insight that we can gain from that. But before we do that, let's have a look at these trends. So clicking on the trends tab, well, this is what you see inside Captivate, a very similar style graph. It just essentially tells us what's going on and when. It tells us what's happening at an episode by episode level. It allows us to compare and contrast and actually dig in to insights on very specific timelines. So this information is really, really useful information. It's trend spotting, essentially. It means that we can dig in to what's really going on with our listener data inside Apple Podcasts. So if we click and take a deep dive look into The Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 8, if we just look at this episode, you'll see that actually it's very, very similar to how Captivate.fm displays your listener data too, in that it shows you the timeline of your episode, and it shows you where people listen, shows you where people drop off, shows you what people are actually doing. But of course, this is just within the Apple ecosystem. So it's the listener behavior within the Apple ecosystem, whether that's from iTunes, old school iTunes, from Apple Podcasts, on varying devices, iPhone, iPad, or of course, on desktop computers or laptop computers. It's just very interesting information. You know, we have total time listened, the time per device, the average consumption, and the number of devices subscribed. This is very, very interesting information. It's not too deep, but it allows us to make educated decisions. So we can see here that no one really listens past 64%. And that must be where we start blabbering on about subscribing and we start going on about Patreon and all sorts of things. No one listens to this bit, okay? So we shouldn't really be putting our strongest calls to action there. We should probably put them somewhere at the beginning where most people are. And this is the type of insight that we can get from Apple Podcasts Connect. It's 
very obvious data, but it's something that I think every podcaster should look at, and I think it's something that you should be familiar with. And what I want you to really understand here is, of course, that Spotify will deliver the same kind of information for its own ecosystem, as will Google Podcasts. Now, we have other videos on those platforms and their insights and intelligence here on the channel. So give it a like, give it a subscribe, and let me know in the comments if you need a hand with Apple Podcasts Connect.